and we're live okay so I want to talk to you if you're watching this on the replay right now while we wait for people to get here if you are watching this on the replay just so you know if you want to get notifications and know when these live streams are happening so you can be here live make sure you turn on notifications for my channel it's right next to the subscribe button you just click the little bell and then you can set up to get notifications when I post so then you'll know when I'm live and you can be here live if you want to be um, and then also if you want to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit feel free I'm gonna be waiting here right now while people get on live to hang out so we're gonna be hanging out for a little bit but we're gonna be making a pasta dish tonight for dinner and then of course I'm gonna be doing Q&A with everyone who is here live to ask questions so now with all that said I'm gonna get myself set up I know we've got a couple people here already so I'm glad that you're here okay we have Evie is here um, Evie's the first one very good very good and uh, Lauren goes to Hollywood says hi Sarah hello Lauren I'm glad y'all are here hanging out anyone else as you come on feel free to say hi I'm gonna go ahead and pull the live stream up on my phone on my phone on my tablet um, so that I can read your comments when I turn the camera down for chopping here we go that's good where'd I put my water all right ready to rock and roll natalie smith says happy thursday happy thursday natalie i'm glad that you're here how is everyone doing on this thursday are we having a good day not so great day <laughs> it's pretty nice here the weather has been really nice the past couple days um really nice temperature and the kitties have been loving it because we've been able to open up the windows which has been really nice um Evie says, what's the pasta, bolognese, or, so we're going to do um, some penne, and then it's just going to be a pasta with a basic meat sauce, but I'm going to show you kind of how I make it and a couple things you might want to do to jazz it up uh, to make it a little more interesting. So it's a pretty simple meal, and I think it will be fairly quick. Um, live streaming always makes cooking take longer just because I'm showing you all what I'm doing and explaining things, answering questions, but this is going to be a good quick meal for you to make if you're looking for something fast. And even if you're used to making pasta, like I said, there's a couple things that I do that I think help kind of take it to the next level. And even though it's a quick meal, you know, it can still taste really great and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, well, Seems like we got a few people. I'm sure more people will be coming on, um, but we can go ahead and get started. Natalie Smith says, I just adopted a cat. We are cuddling and watching you. Yay, that's so exciting. Does your cat have a name yet? I would love to know what it is. And Evie's number one says, finished up my last paper for the school year today. That's awesome. That's such a good feeling to be done. So I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Um, and if you all have questions about the food or other cooking things or nutrition stuff or whatever, um, I'm happy to answer those. Just, you know, the general disclaimer I always like to give that when I give answers to these questions, it's not a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis or treatment or anything like that or a substitute for talking to your doctor or your dietitian. It's just general information and advice. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And, oh, Natalie's cat, Hopper, like Chief Hopper from Stranger Things. Very cute. That's a very cute name. I love it. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, and I've kind of, I always try to get stuff, st get stuff set up beforehand, but I usually forget at least one thing. Hopefully we're doing okay today. So the first thing we're going to work on is the sauce and kind of get that going. So I will turn you all this way a little bit. So oh, a little bit more. There we go. So I've got my pasta pot right there, and then I've got this pot here that I'm getting going. So what we're gonna do is get some oil in the pan. So I'm using Cassandrino's olive oil. It's a brand that I really like. It's tasty stuff. If you want to check out this brand specifically, I do have a link to my store below the video, so you can always go there and see all of my favorite things from you know different cooking tools and different products and stuff. So this is on there if you're interested. Um, and that's also a nice way to support the channel because I do get a small percentage of that back from Amazon. You pay the same price, but Amazon gives me a little bit, which is nice. So if you want to support the work I do, then that's a good way to do it. Um, but I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this in the pan. Done with that. And now we're going to get this heating up. I'm just heating this up on medium heat. And we'll let that go for a little bit. And in the meantime, while that's heating up, we'll start working on a couple other things. So I'll turn you back this way for now. There we go. Um, Evie says that this, she just goes for the cheapest olive oil. That works too. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I'm going to be doing with the pasta sauce is adding in some yellow squash. So when we do have squash in the summer, first off, 
summer squash is one of my favorite favorite foods um, and so I like to find ways to work them in especially because they're not Jason's favorite so they're super abundant I love them and I make them for myself a lot but sometimes I try to find ways to incorporate them where they're not as prominent but they're still part of the dish so I can appreciate it but a little bit more fits with what Jason likes so that's what we're gonna do today so I have four yellow squash here you could also do zucchini with this but we're gonna give these a really nice fine dice so that we can mix them into the sauce so they're not gonna be like a, like the star of the show but they're just gonna be mixed in there so this and I don't you know in the winter time when we don't have the squash I don't do this but when we do have it I like to do this because it does increase the veggies a little bit which is always nice and it helps me incorporate a food that I really like and that is abundant this time of year and you know if especially if you have any yellow squash or zucchini plants you know that they can really get pr producing and then you got to figure out what you're gonna do um Okay, so I'm going to turn y'all facing down towards the cutting board so you can see me chop this up. And then, um, you know, I'll be looking at your comments and questions over here and we can keep chatting. But let's get this turned down. It's always a little bit of a thing to make, make it the way I want it to be so you guys can see what's happening. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, so with this, we're going to be doing, like I said, a very, very fine cut on this. So... First thing, I'm just going to cut off the top and cut off the bottom. If you want to see the knives that I use, those are linked in my store as well. So, you know, if you're curious about that. And then I'm going to slice this in half. Because the thing is, whenever you have something like this that is, you know, has a round edge, you don't want that rolling around your cutting board because that increases the chance that you're going to cut yourself. So we're going to cut it in half. So now we have a nice, stable, flat surface. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do... Kind of like a vertical cut on this go the long ways of the squash little thin sections and then I'm gonna turn it back around and we're just gonna cut across like this to give us a really nice fine dice on this and because this is being cut so small and so thinly it's just gonna kind of break down and melt down into the whole sauce which is nice I'll move this I always try to make sure I'm staying in front of the in front of the camera for you guys so you can actually see what's happening. Um, oh, you see that? I almost cut my finger off because I slipped. We do not want that to happen. I always say one of these days I'm going to cut my finger on one of these live streams <laughs> and it's going to be a bad situation, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, so now we're going to do this one. So same thing, we're just going to cut it vertical or long ways, I guess would be the right way, right word for that. And then we're going to go across. Pretty simple. So I'm going to keep on cutting these up and let y'all watch the process. And I'm going to keep watching the pan too to make sure the oil isn't getting too hot. Um, but while I continue to do this, I'll go ahead and look at what y'all are saying in the comments and answer some questions while I chop. Okay, so let's see. Where did I leave off? Oh, Evie's number one says, fun, scary cat story. Um... I needed to grab my cat who wanted to go over the balcony fence living on the second floor. Yeah, that's not fun. Um, Natalie says she likes to work veggies into her pasta as well. And Evie has a question. Is there a difference between the green courgette and the yellow one besides the color? Um, I mean, not really. I don't think they really taste any different. Uh, it's just really your preference. I mean, obviously when things have, well, maybe not obviously, but when things have different colors, um, they're going to have a little bit different nutrients. I mean, they're basically the same, but those colors come from, you know, different antioxidants and things. So that's why it's good to get a variety of different colors because you're getting a little bit of a different mix of nutrients. Um, and just also what's going to look good with your meal. Something you might consider for your meal is like if you're having a bunch of foods that are kind of this yellow color or maybe white or brown or whatever kind of the same color palette then you might want to go for the zucchini because that's going to add a little bit more visual interest to have the mixture of different colors as opposed to having things all be the same uh, but you know if things do look the same it's not a big deal but that's something that one reason why you might choose one over the other if you've got a bunch of different colors um, if you want to have a bunch of different colors going on, then, you know, depending on what else you're serving at that meal, you might choose the zucchini over the summer squash. And, of course, there's a lot of other different kinds you can get. I mean, there's striped ones, and there's um, bumpy ones, and, you know, round, and the patty pan squash that are kind of like 
flat and squat and crook neck, all kinds of different shapes and sizes too that you can choose from. Okay. Oh, some more comments. Um, oh, Jenna99 says, what are the cat's favorite meats um, and do they do anything when you cook them? Well, my cat smells tuna, he has to run in the kitchen and ask for some. My cats aren't really into any specific meats, which I've never had that experience for. Like, I could put a salmon filet on the table, and I do not think they would care. Um, sometimes if I open a can of tuna, the, a couple of them will come in because they think it's wet food. One of our cats, Luna, she doesn't even like wet food. We've tried all kinds of different brands. She's not into it. Um, so, I don't know what that's about. But the things that they really like are kind of... I think peculiar, I'm gonna turn y'all facing straight up now because we need to get the meat in the pan with the oil. So we're gonna take a break on the squash, we'll correct real quick, and I will turn you this way. I cannot talk today. So I'm gonna get the oil kinda of moving around in the pan. And um, for the pasta tonight, let me move all my stuff out of the way, we are gonna be doing ground beef. Uh, usually I do sausage, just cause when you do sausage, you're already getting the other spices mixed in there. Um, so you're kinda of getting that flavor but you know this is what we had in the freezer so this is what we're going with i actually have used up all the sausage except a package of links from my hog share so i need to get another one we got a half a hog share last february and now it's so that lasts us about a year and a half and so now we need to get a new one i'm gonna turn this down a little bit so the first thing i'm doing is getting some fennel seed here i don't know i'm just kind of putting like a generous handful I'm sprinkling that in the pan so we're going to get those in the oil first to kind of get those popping and heating up um, so that adds that nice fennel kind of licorice flavor and then we're going to add our ground beef in to cook so let me cut this open um and yeah i mean you could use anything sorry trash cans over here you could use anything that you want you could use the ground beef you could use sausage you don't have to do meat at all if you don't want to do that you know it's just kind of whatever you like whatever you have um that's i mean most of the things i make they're not very specific they're just kind of like i kind of make it up or use what i have on hand or sometimes like this is kind of inspired by a recipe from a youtuber named donald skihan i don't know if i'm saying his name correctly but he is a cooking youtube channel and i had seen a recipe that he did with a pasta, which was kind of when I first started making this, I don't know, a year ago or something, was the inspiration behind it. And he recommended doing the fennel seed, and I was like, oh, that's a good tip. You know, so a lot of my cooking is just whatever I come up with or kind of bits and pieces from other recipes. It's getting a little loud, so I apologize for that. All right, I'm gonna rinse off my hands real quick, and I'll be right back. And let me know if it's too loud and you can't hear me. Um, oh, Evie's leaving. Have a nice sleep, Evie. I appreciate you hanging out even though you're on the other side of the world. Um, so to the meat, I'm going to add some garlic powder. Now, when I use sausage, I don't do that because the sausage already has that kind of stuff in there. Um, I'm also going to add in a little bit of salt. And then we're just gonna stir this all around and kind of get it all, all working together. Okay. All right, so that's doing its thing. And now we're gonna go back the um finish up the yellow squash while this is browning and then that's going to go in the pan next so let me get you turned back around and then i will respond to more of your comments and questions while we chop sorry to give you a nice shot of my armpit there but that's just what we got to do to get the camera changed um all right let's see where i left off talking about cats oh okay so the cats that's the last thing i said we were talking about what the cats like so my cats are not 
really big fans of like, they don't come in and bother me if I'm cooking fish or any kind of meat or anything. They like different vegetables, <laughs> which I guess I'd, I've never seen anything like this. It's mostly Luna. I mean, the Big Orange and Moxie are both into like, when I bring the farmer's market stuff home, and if any of y'all have seen um, when I post my farmer's market hauls on my Instagram, they are all about it. They're like in the bags, they're on the table, like smelling all the vegetables and like inspecting everything and trying to figure out everything is. Uh, but Luna, when I'm cooking, like sometimes when I am cooking, maybe I have some kale or something that I'm kind of tearing up and getting ready to wash. She will be like in the bowl trying to pull kale out and like take it away and like chew on it. Moxie will also chew on leafy greens like that. Luna also loves carrots. Whenever we're cutting up carrots, she will like try to get on the carrot bag and like rub her face all over it. Um, she, if she comes up and she smells that there have been carrots on the cutting board, she'll try to get on the cutting board and like rub all over it. She also loves raw flour. If I'm like rolling out biscuits or pizza dough or whatever, she will like try to get in the cutting board and like get some on her paw or get it on her nose or whatever. So my cats have what I think are probably atypical food interests, but you know, whatever. Everyone has, has their preferences and I guess my cats are no different. Okay, so we've got all the squash chopped up. Um, let's see. Oh, Evie, who's not here now, but said that her cats love crisps. Um, the other loves everything else, mostly whipped cream and yogurt. Okay, okay. Oh, Nita says she's here. Hello, Nita, how are you? Sorry, I'll turn y'all, I'm done chopping. I can turn y'all straight up instead of making you just look at the cutting board because that's kind of boring. Um, good to see you, Nita. I'm happy that you made it. Um, Nita says that, you know, it's kind of weird that my cats are into the vegetables. Yeah, I don't get it. Maybe it's also because my cats are indoor cats because where we live, it's not really a good area for them to be going outside. Um, it's not really safe for them because of cars and stuff, which is a disappointment to me because me and Jason always both grew up with cats that went in and out. So I think maybe part of it is like, it smells like the outdoors and they're like, what's that? I got to know more about it. Um, but I think Luna will always love carrots. Um... Gemin 90 said, Gemin 99 says that the cats my aunts used to have loved playing with nuts. Oh yeah, our cats love that too. If we have like, especially nuts in the shell, like an almond or something that they can roll around or a walnut, they're into that. Um, oh, Anita says, tired but glad to be here. Your channel makes me happy. Thanks, Nita. Well, I'm so happy that you're here and I hope you get some rest so you feel less tired. Um, Anita says that she had a cat that loved butter and olive oil. I've had cats like that too that really like oils and stuff and want to get in with that. Um, kind of Vegan says, why do organic carrots go soft so quickly? The cheap ones stay crisp forever. You know, I don't know. I've never noticed that personally. Um, maybe that's something. I wonder if there's like a good experiment on that. I'm not sure. I've never really noticed that, but that's not to say that you are wrong. I just haven't noticed it. Okay, so we have the meat still browning here, so we're still gonna keep that doing its thing um, before we add in the squash. But it's much quieter over here now, which is nice, that we don't have to <laughs> hear all the sizzling, because I don't know how loud it is on your end. I mean, y'all usually say that you can hear me fine when stuff like that is happening, but on my end, it's very loud, and I feel like I'm screaming at you. Okay, so while that is doing its thing, Thing. I guess we can go ahead. I'm gonna, I've got water in this pot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on um, and get it cooking. I did nick my nail a little bit when I almost cut myself earlier, but I don't think it's gonna break off or anything. But let's see if y'all have any questions, or if you do have questions, feel free because we're kind of at a downtime in the cooking now, so this is a good time for Q and A. Um, Jenna ninety nine says that their cat likes licking butter wrappers. I think that makes sense, right? <laughs> um. Oh, I tried to get myself a giant glass of water today. I'm going to try to remember to drink it because y'all know I always forget and then my voice gets all croaky. Also, these straws, so into them. I think I mentioned these in my last What I Eat In A Day video. I've been wanting to get stainless steel straws for probably like 
eight years or something now and I just never have. I finally went ahead and did it. So, so happy. I got the ones that have are bent. I'm into it. I like them. Those are linked to my store too if you want to see them. I added them because I, I have been liking them so much. Um, I've really been liking them for iced coffee and one thing I really like them is because um, one thing I like about them is that the metal gets cold with your cold beverage so it kind of makes everything extra crisp and refreshing especially now that it's getting hotter outside here. So if you've been thinking about it, highly recommend. Jason is also a big fan. It's like our new favorite thing. So, And you can get different sets. Like I said, you can get the bent ones, you can get straight ones, you can get combo packs that have a little bit of both. Um, the one I have linked is all of the bent ones and it comes with two cleaner brushes as well. Because that's the one thing with the stainless steel I was worried about is, you know, you can't see what's going on in there, being able to clean it. I thought about glass ones, but that seems dangerous. I, I don't know, I worry about that breaking in my mouth or something, or like falling on the floor and shattering. Um, so mine did come with two really nice cleaner brushes, and that's the one, like I said, that I've linked comes with the cleaner brushes. So that's nice to make sure that you're keeping them clean. Um, Uh, Lauren Goes Hollywood says, I think I would bite the straw and hurt my teeth. Yeah, if you have a habit of doing that, then there might be something to worry about, but I haven't had problems with, with that. Um, Jenny99 says, did you see my comment about who makes Kim Kardashian's lollipops? Um, I don't know if I saw your specific comment, but I do know who makes them. If y'all haven't seen, I did a video, was that a couple weeks ago now? about um, when Kim Kardashian posted that ad for the appetite suppressant lollipops as a whole thing and I was not happy about it. Um, but they are made by a brand that she has worked with before. It's the same people that make those like teas that are supposed to, whatever, they're like advertised as weight loss teas. Basically I think they're just laxatives. Um, and also I think their company has some sort of shakes. Oh, basically it's a company that just sells like diet products that in my opinion, no one has any business using it. I think they're really awful. Um, King says, isn't bad pasta on night? I'm not sure what you mean, but if you're asking if pasta is bad, no. Um, I don't know why pasta gets this bad rap. It's, it's, it's really interesting to me to see kind of, and it kind of goes in ebbs and flows and waves and trends of like the different foods that people um, are told or hear about as like being terrible for you or whatever. Uh, no, pasta is just flour and water mixed together, <laughs> um, you know, perfectly fine, so nothing to worry about there, as is the case with basically every food, but, you know, uh, making people freak out and be scared about foods, I guess, gets people to click things or buy things, so that's why people do it, but I don't find it particularly helpful because I think it just confuses people about food and makes people worry about things that they really don't need to worry about. Okay, so the meat getting pretty well cooked. So now we are going to toss in a little bit of raw meat on the spatula. I would like to get off. There we go. Now we're going to toss in all of that squash that we cut up earlier. So we've got quite a bit of it here. I'm just going to kind of add it in in handfuls. Um, and like I said, in the winter, I don't do this because we don't have summer squash in the winter. But when the squash is here, I think this is a fun way to work it in. Um, because, yeah, in the summer you always need more recipes for using squash. Um, Lauren Goes Hollywood says, yeah, fads are so annoying. Low carb, keto, just eat fresh food. Yeah. It's, you know, it's people want something to talk about, I guess. And I do have a video on that about, like, why do we demonize foods? I think there's a lot of different reasons. But it's like, y'all just eat food and relax. That's what I hope the, one of the messages you get from my videos is that, as I always say, it doesn't have to be complicated. And, you know... We don't have to worry about this stuff so much. Get a variety, eat a lot of things that, um, you know, a lot of different things, eat things that you like because that's important. And, you know, nutrition is one thing to consider when we're making our food choices, but it isn't the only thing that matters or the only thing we should consider. And I think a lot of times the role of nutrition gets blown out of proportion. It's important, it makes a difference, but it's also not like the be all end all thing. So we're gonna add a little more salt now here on the squash, since we've added that in the pan and that hasn't been salted yet. So we've got that going. And then I'm just gonna mix this in with the beef. You can kind of see that there. Um, and just get this cooking down and reducing. And I'm throwing the squash across the kitchen. Um, and the squash will, because it has so much water in it, it will cook down a lot. 
So we just got to kind of give it time to do that and break down a little bit. And one of the, the main way I grew up eating summer squash, summer squash was just like cooked in a pan with some onions and some butter and some salt. And you just kind of cook it till it's all a big mushy mess. That's like one of my favorite ways to eat it because it's the way I grew up eating it. I always liked it. Um, but I do try to find other ways to eat it too because, like I said, there's so much of it in the summer. And also, again, Jason's not a big fan of cooking it that way. So that's not to say I never do it because I like it. But I also keep him in mind when I'm doing our meal planning and try to find other ways that he enjoys a little bit more. I also really like roasting squash. I mean, that's like my favorite way to cook almost anything, um, any vegetable. And it works well with squash too. Okay, so we've got that mixed in. I'm going to leave that alone a little bit and let it just kind of cook. I'm also going to rinse the salt off my fingers. Okay, so let's see what y'all have to say. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, King says, night like the time. Pasta is always good, but I don't think it's good for dinner. I mean, if you don't like having pasta in the evening, like, that's no you know, whatever, eat whatever you want. But nutritionally, sorry, I'm gonna clip this piece of hair up. It's like bothering me. Nutritionally speaking, no, that, that's not really a thing. I, I know that's kind of become something that, again, we have all the trends, something that has been popular. I feel like here, in the past few years, I've heard it's like, oh, you shouldn't have carbs at night. I don't know where that comes from. It's like people just come up with these rules, just different ways for people to restrict things, I get, I guess, carbs. Any time of the day you wanna have them, fine. Obviously, if you have like, a medical condition like diabetes where you have to manage your blood sugar then you have to be more aware of that type of thing um, but for the general person it's not something to worry about and I think you know for any meal really the key one the thing that I think about for any meal or snack is to have four things really carbs fat and protein and then fiber and fiber usually comes along with that kind of stuff a lot of times but Carbs, fat, protein, fiber. When you get those four things, that helps you get a variety of foods, a variety of nutrients, a variety of textures and flavors and all that kind of stuff. And that's going to make your meals more satisfying, um, help you to feel, you know, satisfied as far as fullness, but also just flavors and textures and colors and all that kind of stuff. And if you look at my meals, you know, most of the time they have all those things. Again, it's not like a rule like every meal must have those or something. Sometimes I have meals that don't have one of those things or maybe two of those things. Um, but if you're eating a mixed diet of different foods, you generally get those things. And that is just kind of one of those things that you kind of know if I have that mixture of things, that's what's going to make me feel good sort of thing. So this is cooking down pretty well. getting reduced a little bit. You might be able to tell. I feel like it was pretty high up in the frame coming out of the pan when I first started. And now we're getting it cooked down really nice. Okay, next question. Um, Jenin says, being a guy who loves food, I don't need someone who makes eating difficult. Yeah. And Lauren says, yeah, there's a difference how carbs are absorbed at night. Does your body understand time? Yeah, I think it's something that people came up with, like, your circadian rhythms or something. But it doesn't really make sense when you actually dig into it. Uh, kind of Vegan says, ever feel an irresistible urge to eat junk? I had three ice creams and six Mickey D hamburgers the other night. Um, I don't ever really feel like a desire to eat a lot of one type of food right now, but I will say that that used to happen to me when I dieted a lot. So when I used to go on diet after diet, if I was like on a diet, I would be like sticking to the diet during the week. And then a lot of times on like a Friday or the weekend, it would kind of get to that point where I'd be at my breaking point. And then I would just eat like a ton of kind of whatever or whatever foods weren't allowed on that diet. So if like you n enjoy ice cream, but like you never let yourself have it ever. And then you feel like you're out of control and you eat a bunch of it when it's around, that might be something to look at. Um, also, you know, there's other factors. Did you like have a busy day where there was a bunch of different circumstances and you didn't eat anything else and you were super hungry? There's a lot of other things. I'm looking over here because Jason is over here pulling pizza out of the fridge. Perhaps <laughs> if you tore an ice cream factory? May, yeah, maybe if you tore an ice cream factory. That might be a time when you'd eat a lot of ice cream. Um, 
I know there's a bag of chips around. I'm just like, num, 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 num. Jason, all Jason chips. loves all the chips. I'm a chip fiend, though. Um, but if you have other questions about that, uh, let me know. I don't want to, like, blow you off. That's a quick answer. If you want to deeper dive, keep asking questions. We can get into it more. Um, Talvish says... If I want to quit all sweets, can I still get my sugar intake from breads and potatoes? Well, Talvish, I would not encourage you to quit all sweets. Um, it's not something that you need to do for your health. There's nothing wrong with having sweet foods or dessert foods or whatever. And also, doing that can actually backfire. So like what we were just talking about, like you try to cut those foods out, but then what happens is you feel out of control around those foods, and when you do have them, you end up, you know, binging on them or, like, feeling like you have to eat all that is there or you can't get enough. And that's because that's just a tool that our body uses. It's biology. It's a, a physical thing and a mental thing where if we don't have access to something and then all of a sudden it's there and we decide to eat it, our body makes it take longer for us to feel full and satisfied by that food so that we can eat more of it. Um, it makes that food taste better to us. It also can, um, psychologically, you're kind of having this thing happen where it's like, well, we're never allowed to have this, and now we are, and who knows if we'll ever get this again, so we need to eat as much as possible. And I talk about that in a few different videos. It's kind of this cycle that happens where we restrict food, and then we binge on it, and then we restrict, and we binge, and we just get caught in this cycle. And because we have the binges, we think that that means that we need to do the restriction. It kind of confirms that idea for us that the restriction is necessary, but the restriction is actually the cause. That's the problem, but we keep going back to it thinking that's going to solve the problem when it's actually creating the problem. Uh, and if you want to know about like quitting sugar and stuff like that, um, I have the older video where I talk about my personal experience that's on the channel. It's actually the most viewed video on the channel, which I find interesting, um, where I tried to cut out sweet foods for like a year, and I talk about why that wasn't a good idea. Uh, and then also I have a video about called Quitting Sugar. Uh, look that one up on my channel. That's also one where I talk about this idea that we need to quit sugar and kind of the why that's not right and some of the problems with that. Did you have something to say, Jason? Um, or are you just looking no. at comments? Oh, I thought you had something. Well, I'm doing comments, but you should tell everybody to hit thumbs up right now. Jason says hit thumbs up right yeah, now. Hit the like button, you know? <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching, if you're there watching like this. the video. Oh, our water's and getting also, too boiling. What are you making? Um, we're doing pasta night, so Ooh, okay. I'm making... Uh, so I'm using ground beef because we didn't have any sausage, and then right. the pasta's gonna go there, and there's yellow squash in I it. see the squash in Yeah, there. we talked about how that's not your favorite, but how this is a way that I incorporate it so I can have it and enjoy it, and you also don't mind it as much. So don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it, as long as it's not, like, more... Uh, more squash than other ingredients. Well, it right. might be, but there's sauce going to go in here, too. We do this all the time, and you never have a problem with it. Can I have some of your LaCroix? Yeah. Thanks. We played Ultimate Frisbee after work, mm -hmm. which is fun, except there was one guy that, like, played Ultimate Frisbee in college. So oh, wow. he was, like, Captain Intense. <laughs> and so we just kind of lost a lot. Oh. But uh, it was kind of fun to run for, like, a reason other than running in a circle, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's nice. So. Yeah. Sports. Games. That's, Sports. That's more fun. Oh. I personally, I'm not, I don't. I need to take a shower. Running. I like mm -hmm. other things. Okay, you're gonna take a shower, um, and I'm just gonna be making this. Wait, before so, I go. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see if anyone. I saw a couple of Jason. Kind of vegan says, "How much can Jason eat in one sitting? A whole bag of chips?" <laughs> I think I'd probably get tired of a whole bag. Yeah. I, Although yeah. I did. Uh, Let's see if I can find the bag right here. Quick. When I was at the store the other day, I got a <laughs> bag of off-brand party mix from Food Lion, which is like kind of a cheapo generic one. And I would say I was watching Atomic Blonde, and I probably ate maybe half of that. I ate some of it too. So I ate a little bit of it too. Yeah. Um, but that's more of like I just really enjoy it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, and it's not something that we typically, it's not like in our general rotation, so I feel like it's one of those things that you're like, Yeah, I feel like again, I haven't had this in a long time, you know, type of thing. I'm the one that buys chips in general. Sarah, like, I'm salty not snacks chips. is what I like. <laughs> um, I think after a while if I eat too many chips, though, I start to feel like bleh, mainly because I don't think I drink enough water. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's Pudding, though, I can eat a lot of pudding. Paying attention to how your body feels. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, um, oh, and Lauren said, which I forgot, she said, when is Jason going to yeah, cook I for us? That. We're supposed to do that for this month's I was cooking, gonna, I forgot. When you texted me that you're doing your live stream, I almost said, like, wow, way to keep me involved. I forgot! Sorry. But we can either do that next time, or even like a, you know, like an odd time or something. Yeah, like maybe that. a special edition. Special edition? <laughs> I just clocked my face and my shoulder. Okay, so... Um, yeah, some of these party mix chips right now. Go for it. Well, we're going to be eating semi shortly, so don't eat too much. Right, how, how short? Ruin your appetite. I mean, got to cook the pasta. I don't know, within like within 30 minutes for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's do a little bit. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay, let's see who I missed. Uh, da 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 da. Okay, so, oh, we're talking about a uh, kind of vegan's question. Um, Jenin says, that's a problem people in Sarasana and work can help you with. Yeah, I mean, if there's something, like, if you do think it's something that you need help with, I'm a resource. You can, I take one-on-one -on -one clients, or you might find a dietitian local to you. Um, you know, whatever, depending where you are. Uh, King says, pasta is, oh, we're talking about the pasta thing again. Pasta is 60-70% carbohydrate. How body will burn that during sleeping? Um, so, I would say it's it's basically 100% carbohydrate. I mean, there's a little bit of, well, there is some protein. It's pretty high. Um, but, so, food, the way your body works is, it's not like, you eat something and then your body has to burn it or like your body's always burning food you just ate or it's always taking stuff from your energy stores. It's kind of using a little bit of everything. And so sometimes your body's leaning more like if you just ate then your body's gonna be using your available blood sugar whereas when you're sleeping, you're not getting any food. So your body's gonna be using your stored carbohydrates, stored fat, all that kind of thing. But your body can switch between those really easily and it's not like this math equation. Um, it's not like the day begins and then the day ends and then like you're reset for the day. It's this constant thing that's always happening. So you might eat a little bit less than what your body needs one day and eat a little bit more than what your body needs another day and your body's kind of just constantly adjusting to those things. Um, so that's kind of the basic way. So your body has stores for fat, stores for carbohydrate. Your body stores carbohydrate in your liver and in your muscle cells to be used at night when you need that. Um, so your brain can function and your body can function so our bodies can handle all that and as you'll see as well this meal isn't just 100 percent carbohydrate it also has fat and protein as well because like we talked about before having a combination of carbs fat protein and fiber at your meals and snacks is what's going to make for satisfying meals okay we're going to get more into y'all's questions i know i missed a lot when jason came in but we need to do something so we're going to pour the sauce this is just jarred sauce you know Make your own sauce, that's fine. I'm not against that. That's not what we're doing today. This is quick and easy night. So we have um, the Wegmans roasted garlic sauce because I love garlic. I think this is a really good one. So we're gonna pour that into the pan. And I've got my spatula here to try to get all of that goodness out of the jar. Um, And, I, and something that I try to do, you know, meal planning is great and I think it's essential just to make your life easier, but it's also good to have things on hand for when you're in a pinch. Something I always keep on hand is a jar of pasta sauce and a box of pasta. So, you know, if we need something that's always there as an option that can be made. All right, so that's done. We're gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna wash off my hands real quick. So Anita asks, is there a difference between the nutritional value with different types of pasta like black bean pasta, Regular pasta, etc. Okay. Um, so, well, as far let's talk about like wheat pasta first. So, as far as the different types of wheat pasta, you basically have white pasta and then whole grain pasta, whole wheat pasta. Let me mix this up real quick. Um, so the differences between those is going to be in some of the vitamins. The whole grain pasta is going to retain. Um, some of those nutrients that are lost when you process something into white flour. Um, and also it's gonna have more fiber. So that's kind of the difference there. Though it's not like a huge deal because again, it's not like if, if we had white pasta with this meal, right? It's not like we wouldn't be getting any fiber because we've got the squash I put in here in the sauce and then also the veggies we're gonna have with it on the side and all that. Um, so, you know, if there's a certain shape I want and I can't find it in a whole grain version, not a big deal, I'll just get the white pasta. Um, 
If I can find a whole grain version, great, I'll get that. Uh, we don't really mind the difference, I don't even notice really a difference in flavor between white pasta and whole grain pasta. I don't think you do either really, Jason. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that so, when you first do it, you notice, but after a while, I don't pay attention to it whatsoever. Yeah, so I don't, like some people really have an aversion, I'm like, I don't notice any difference. I think, yeah, part of it is whatever you're familiar with, and something that can help with that is if you want to start like doing 25%, 75%, whatever. Um, so yeah, the pasta we're using tonight is the whole wheat penne. Now, as far as other types of pasta, it's really going to vary um, just depending on whatever the pasta is made out of because there's, you know, more, I would say, access to foods or an interest in making foods for people who have celiac disease. And so maybe they can't have wheat. They need a gluten-free pasta. There's a lot more options out there. Um, and they're not going to be too big of a difference generally, I would think. Maybe the bean ones are a little higher in protein. I'd have to look at each individual one and compare them. But, you know, if you wanted to do a comparison, you could look at the nutrition facts and kind of see real quickly what the main differences are. Um, okay, so we've got the sauce in here, so I'm just going to let this bubble away a little bit. And we'll add a couple more things in there later. But our water is boiling. So let's see how this is supposed to boil for like 10 minutes or so. So we've got that going. Move the lid back here. Oh, I need to salt the water. I almost forgot. What a buffet! <laughs> if you're gonna talk, you gotta come be in the camera. How's that show pointing anyway? Oh. She said, so "Yeah." Uh, you were saying something I wanted to ask you about. Uh, what were you just talking about? Um, different types of pasta, whole grain pasta. Don't notice a difference. Celiac disease, bean pasta. Yeah, something with pasta. Difference between them? Oh, I can't remember now. Maybe it'll come to you. Do you want me to read a comment? Sure, go for it. Oh, what that battery? Would be really helpful. Uh, so let's see. Talvish says, "I love your videos." Oh, thanks, Talvish. I'm glad that you like them. And kind of vegan asked about meeting the chips. And she says that she'd eat a whole bag so she doesn't buy any. And she said 100% of the time. Who did? Kind of vegan. I think kind of vegan's a guy, but I'm not 100% oh, sure. Sorry, kind of vegan. I don't want to make any assumptions, but I think I think that's right. Do you ever see words like kind of and associate them with being feminine because of like Spanish or something? No, because oh. I took French. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, kind of vegan. Your, your consequence of that. Um, Nita said... That we should do a special edition with my cooking. Nita, I think it would be an awesome... You know, I guess I can come over here. I think it would be awesome, and... I would love it. I it, just gotta remember it. It will happen sometime soon. Mm -hmm. We promise. Uh oh, you're not gonna stop blocking. I wanna show Poinji, because she's so cute. But I also wanna read these comments. Um, Natalie Smith says, I could almost eat a whole bag of smart food popcorn. I don't know how big that is. I'm assuming that's a normal size uh, popcorn bag. Which, I don't think that's... You know, too wild because I mean, popcorn is there's a much to it. Yeah, that's why they give you like the giant buckets at the theater. Well, in addition to that, it's really cheap, but you can eat a lot of popcorn pretty easy and not fill you up, you know, unless you that's why, again, mixture of carbs, fat, and protein. Because if yeah. you're just having popcorn, not that you, but you can just eat popcorn. You so know what when I'm you saying? have like, popcorn, you should put like peanut MMs on there. Yeah, and then uh, when there, there you go. What do you think, Wendy? Okay, um, let me see. Uh, Nita says, I think people think we should burn out, sorry, I think people think we should burn all out carbs, but isn't that erroneous? Like we just use carbs, or like we should burn them all up or something? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you should say both. Yeah, I mean, so carbohydrates are preferred fuel source for your body, they're good for quick energy, um, they're preferred fuel source for our brains, um, and the, they, they're the kind of quick, easy access energy. So that's why they're a good thing to have, because that's what's going to give you the energy right then. That burn your them body all, needs, she says. That we need to burn them all. Yeah. Um, get rid of them. Oh, I see. I think, I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, your body's going to use them eventually, but it might not be right then. You know what I mean? So, and also, you know, if someone is, like, incredibly active, there's a floof sitting on my foot. Come here, you. You're going to be right here. Everyone's going to see how cute you are. Nita also commented how cute Pornji was, oh. which I appreciate. And if you want to see more cats 
and stuff on YouTube. There's a cool channel called Cats and Pets yeah, that has J all sorts of Jason cats. Jason has talk. a channel called Cats and Pets <laughs> that has all the cat things. So if you want to see these cuties and get answers about your cat stuff, go to Jason. Um, sorry, talking about carbs. Yeah, carbs give you quick energy. So that's why maybe also someone who's very physically active might need more carbs than someone who isn't. Um, you know, someone who does like a lot of cardio or whatever, maybe they might kind of naturally feel like they want a little bit more carbohydrate. And that's why it's important to be able to tap into to what your body is saying. Like, what sounds good right now? What do I feel like I need more of or less of or whatever? Because, oh, I didn't set a timer on this. Because every person is different and every day is different. We'll just say nine minutes. That'll probably be fine. For the pasta? I mean. I might take it off a little bit early. Uh, Talver says, if they want to go vegetarian, should they stay away from canned vegetables? Interesting. Before we answer that question, oh, sorry. I'm going to put in some red pepper flakes. Actually, I'll just put them. Because I like things a little bit spicy. So does Jason. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of that in the sauce. Um, stay away from canned vegetables. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you're vegetarian or not vegetarian. There's nothing wrong with canned vegetables. You know, they have their pros and their cons. So canned vegetables super convenient really easy to be able to pop open a can of something and work it into a dish um, also if you have a garden like myself then maybe you do some of your own canning to preserve some of that harvest canning is going to damage some of the nutrients so you're not going to be getting as much as if something was fresh or if it was frozen because those you know we're going to have a little bit more of the nutrients um, and also with canned vegetables uh, flavor might be an issue or texture you can't do as much with them because they're already pre-cooked um, you know they can get kind of mushy you don't have as many options so those are some things to keep in mind you know the pros and cons and what you want to do and what you're trying to do they are going to have already some sodium added but one you know if you're using them in your cooking they already taste a little salty then maybe you just keep that in mind and don't use as much salt because you don't want to over salt your food and then everything tastes like salt and that's not tasty um but you can also rinse them to kind of get rid of some of that excess sodium so it's really just whatever you like you know we don't do a ton of canned vegetables i think mostly because we're not that into them fresh or nothing i say yeah frozen we don't do a lot of frozen either which there's nothing wrong with frozen but it just the Besides texture the movie. isn't. We do do the movie. Yeah, we, we like the movie. Frozen. Uh, but frozen veggies, we don't do a ton of that just because that's not how I really cook, I guess. It's not anything about frozen. It's just that's. I usually cook with fresh stuff. I don't know. And again, freezing gives you. A, you're a little bit more limited again because of that texture issue uh, because of the freezing process. But, you know. If you like some canned stuff, do some canned stuff. I say always have a mixture. It's good to have some canned foods on hand. It's good to have some stuff in the freezer. It's good to have some fresh stuff. Mix it up, do whatever. And especially if the power goes out, you're going to be wishing you had some canned foods because, you know, that electricity, things get dicey. <clears throat> um, to see Jenin says, my girlfriend likes to use rice noodles as a pasta substitute for her friends with celiac. Oh, yeah. And I also Perfect say, example. in case you've forgotten my gender, I'm going to let you know that a Jenin, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is a low-ranking ninja. Oh! They made this account when they're interested in ninjas, and ninjas are mostly a guy interest. I didn't know that. But Jason... Big ninja fan here. <laughs> I went as a ninja for Halloween for about, I don't know, five years or so. And I'm pretty sure I saw my ninja mask in my parents' bedroom somewhere. <laughs> and I had ninja stars that I was not very good at throwing, but was awesome. And I'm now sure you're they're... a big fan of ninja on Twitch. So it all comes Oh yeah, that's right. Circle. Ninja on Twitch. Uh, and uh, Ninja Turtles, but seriously, if you're not into Westworld, they are up to date in Westworld, watch it. Ninjas. That's, that's all the spoilers I'll do with it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Westworld is one of our favorite shows, for sure. I love it. So good. Are we caught up on comments? Yep, I think so. Oh, I think yeah. I read Okay. Yep. I don't know if I skipped anything to you. Oh, Nita says that porn is cute. Yeah, no. We already... We already know what that is. Okay. What, uh, what meal be. Oh, sorry, yeah. We linked this thing. No, go ahead. I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm just wondering what would be a good, like, Jason meal to cook? Oh, like what we should do for your live stream. Okay, well, that's a question. Do y'all want to help decide that? Or would you rather that be a surprise? Well, like, French toast thing would be kind of fun. 
But, oh, yeah, we could do something like breakfasty for sure. Yeah. Breakfast for dinner. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you like to cook? I don't French know. French toast. That's one. That, besides that, other things. Other things. I really like making nachos. Um, I think those are good. Okay. Okay. Uh, my go-to in school was like chicken breasts, and then like uh, a whole bunch of vegetables roasted up. That's kind of like a sheet pan dinner. Those are very vegetable. popular in Pinterest Ooh, right now. Something that I did a lot of. Um, Lauren said uh, whatever he can cook. Smiley uh, face. <laughs> well, that would be everything, Lauren, I'll have you know. <laughs> she might not have been as sassy as I just said it, but, you know. Um, something I used to do in college a lot was get a, like, a wheat tortilla and some tomato sauce, and then, like, onions and mushrooms and, like, on a pepperoni. Essentially make, like, little pizzas. Oh, tortilla. I was thinking about tortilla pizzas the other day. I was, like, in the bathroom somewhere, and it just came to me, like, tortilla pizzas. Is that, we haven't done that in a while. What I did is, because I really like the ingredients, is I just, like, load them up way too high with ingredients, and they pretty much fall apart. So it's almost like a pizza bowl. But it was really good. Um, but I really like, let's say I really like peanut butter, so I'm going to incorporate some of that. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, like, buffalo chicken, maybe, like, a buffalo mash thing. Oh. That Buffalo maybe. mash. Mm. I'd be a fan of that. Okay. Um, I just don't have any garden things. I probably don't have any garden things up yet, I would assume. Yeah, we'll be starting to get... Usually by 4th of July, we start to get a little bit. But I have a few things that are behind. I did see a couple of our peppers have little, little tiny bub, like little pepper butts coming on. So, <laughs> yeah. that's like, exciting. Hmm. Well, I mean, is this like I'm doing it exclusively? You're helping out? I thought what? we would do it together. Um... Yeah, Nita cheering. says, sounds like a frat house menu. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Name me one frat house that made tortilla pizza. <laughs> Jenin says, are you familiar with the channel called Binging with Babish? I've heard of it, but I've I have not watched it. I've seen a lot of videos streaming. I think I've watched one, yeah. maybe. But I'm um, not, like, uh, super knowledgeable. They had a video trending, usually, like, once every few uh, week or two, like, on the YouTube trending page. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty, pretty popular, but I still haven't watched them. But there's a couple channels like that. Not one... Yeah, that does their uh, your weekly report or whatever. They just have a million what? views. Weekly? I don't know. I showed you a is. thumbnail. Million subscribers, you mean? Yeah. Um, you like the really scrawny white guy with like, he always has like gelled hair and it's like a little reporter looking guy. Um, he does a report of the week. <clears throat> I heard the videos are good, but for some reason, never watched them. Um, and he usually has a video every week or so. I think. I'm going to try to move some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh. Binging with Babish, guy who runs that channel recreates recipes from movies and TV shows. Oh, cool. I didn't realize that. Ooh, you know what I think would be kind of cool? Game I mean, of Thrones. Oh, well, maybe that would be cool. Um, hashtag, what's her name? Rosanna Pizzino? Yeah, Nerdy Nuts. Yeah. I am a fan of cutesy looking things. I saw Ooh, on... Oh, we could do like a baking or something. Yeah, I saw on Reddit the other day, this mom made her son, um, some Fortnite like llama cookies for like I was his birthday or something uh -huh. and I thought maybe I should make some cookies because we made the sugar cookies at Christmas time and yeah. those look pretty awesome yeah but what I mean most of yours, yours look pretty awesome I made a pretty awesome snowman I mean can't hit that snowman uh, yeah if you want to see what our Christmas cookies look like go on my Instagram you don't have to scroll back too far because I'm not like those are a hundred times a day on Instagram those are super cool maybe that's something we could make complimentary things. Because, like, if you're helping out and it's kind of cheesy, it's like, oh, I don't know how to do those things. Sarah chops up the weeble wobble. Oh, so you want to be, like, like, what? it's on you. And I, I mean, it could just be, like, your thing and I'm the assistant. And you just say, Terry, could you chop this up? Or, hey, could you... Sarah Morgan Nutrition help me out. Yeah. Um, oh, Jenin says, for example, he made the taco from Taco Town sketch from Saturday Night Live. I'm not familiar with that sketch, but... Did I watch that? Taco Town. Man, that lobster sketch was good. Yeah. Um, that's not... There's one reason I saw this trending. It looked pretty cool. Uh, I can't remember what that was. Um, there's another channel that does that, right? The channel... Some channel I don't like... Man, I won't badmouth them here. Some channel I don't like that kind of does that. They're like, We're so edgy! We're making this thing! Or whatever. But... Yeah, scratch that. Scratch it. Ignore... Ignore anything I said. Alright, um, I think the oh. pasta's done. All right, your, uh, your iPad's about to die, too. Okay, well, we'll just have to look at comments on the thing, which isn't a big deal, because I'm not shopping. I mostly like that now you're watching Philip DeFranco. I somehow DeFranco. selected Philip DeFranco? Oh. oh, he's in his new set. Philip, I don't know if y'all watch Philip DeFranco, but they're, they're moving to their new offices. Yeah, I saw it. And 
you know, know, getting set up in their new space, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's turn off the pasta. If you will keep doing this, I'm gonna go drain the pasta real quick. Dude, I got what? Just chatting. Being entertaining and yeah. cool. Um, Entertainment. <laughs> well, another idea potentially is like, what if I made like fancy drinks or something for like a meal you made? Although to be honest, Sarah doesn't drink any alcohol and I'm cheap to buy stuff, so I guess I could make some really cool like LaCroix mixes or something. Ooh. Maybe that'd be it. We could do some fun kombucha drinks. I know Nita would love that. Nita said she tried kombucha and she thought it tasted like feet. Ew. Yeah. Maybe you just got better Wait, kombucha. yeah, so to be honest, like some of them I think are not very good. The but, flavor makes a difference for sure. Right. I think the ginger ones are really, really strong. There's some ones that are more like I don't know, more fruity or lighter that I think are pretty good. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I guess you could say kind of wine coolery. I'm not sure that's the best way to describe it. Um, hmm. Uh, no, it's not uh, Jenna uh, asked if the channel I was thinking of it was Epic Meal Time. No, but it was similar. They do this stuff in the same ooh, in the same vein as Epic Meal Time. But I can't. Alright, I'm gonna pour this off. Oh, we're gonna like here. overheat my phone. Yeah, I was kinda of wondering. I wasn't thinking about that. Okay, there we go. I've got the pasta here, just because you know we're supposed to be doing the cooking. Oh, so yeah, do you mean even actually? Uh, no, you don't have to. Well, you well I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm pouring. Let me make a mess of everything. Yeah, just don't spill it on yourself. I'm pouring the sauce into the pasta. If you wanna see what the sauce looks like, here. Gives you a look. So you see the squash cooked down. I guess I can pick up the whole book. The, the supporting this. Whoop. Um, there we go. Y'all can kind of do stopping. I'm just getting the sauce. I hope so. With the, with the pasta. It smells divine, if I do say so myself. I'm also shaky from, like I said, ultimate frisbee. Because, whew. I don't know. I also tried running a lot yesterday. Okay, um, so what am I thinking? What am I doing? Uh, Nita says that she bought pomegranate. She loves pomegranate, but it tastes like feet. <laughs> I'm guessing that's what it tastes like. Uh, have we tried I, pomegranate? Was it the healthy brand? Because I tried oh, the yeah. pomegranate. I did not think it was very pomegranate-y. Mm. But I love their ginger lemon because I love ginger and I love lemon. So I'm going to show you on this focus. I really like the GT's kombucha passion berry flavor. That's good. That has passion fruit and blackberry. Um, I'm just mixing this together. Do you want to face it or you want to face no, you? this is fine. Um, let me just get the steam coming up. Uh, this would be like if I was as tall as you are to me, aka okay, like a head shorter. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that flavor is good. Watermelon Wonder is pretty good from GT's Kombucha. Um, what else is good? Um, I like sure. the Trilogy flavor pretty well. All right, so that's all mixed uh, up. What? That's pretty crazy. Oh. Oh, the Epic Mealtime guys live in Jenin's neighborhood. That is wow. Crazy. Or interesting. Like, or <laughs> you go over there. Like, uh, you got any leftovers? <laughs> like, that, like sixty thousand calorie burrito. Like, I just want a quarter of it. <laughs> I feel like with their show, one of the things was like the spectacle is kind of part of the thing. But then, like once you do it so many times, yeah, well, it loses a little bit of the sparkle. I thought it kind of changed it up after a while. I think so, cause you know you gotta be switching up the routine. Okay, so we're gonna plate real quick, and I'm gonna show you what else we're having with the pasta. And get us more turned up at eye level. Mm. Eh. Uh, there we bit. go. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Okay, so I've got my plate here. And then we'll get Jason's. Are you going to hold this while you do it? Right no. So, plate. This is what the finished pasta thing looks like. Y'all can kind of see. So, you know, we've got the penne in there and the sauce and the squashes in there. Um, so, I'm going to get me some of that. I just now realize what you're cooking. Right? Yeah, I really like this. I'm a little worried about the, the non-sausage version. Yeah, I've so. never... I almost... I think I've always made it with sausage. Mm -hmm. And again, if you all watch my video, which you should if you missed it, about the things that um, my parents did to things my parents did really well when it came to raising me as far as food and stuff. Uh, one thing that I shared in there is that I did not enjoy pasta as a kid. But look, I'm having it now because your preferences change as you get older. Um, okay, so we've got the pasta. And I'm going to grate a little Parmesan on that. But for our veggie, again, this is a quick and easy dinner. So... We're doing some arugula, just, you know, out of the box. I had planted some in our garden, but it did not germinate, which was frustrating because 
I love arugula and I'd much rather pick it for free in my garden than pay for it if I can because <laughs> we have the garden space but that's not what happens so we're just working with it and I dropped one on the floor okay so we've got another bin of that in the fridge so we will have plenty so we've got our pasta got our arugula for dressing um i'm gonna do this primal kitchen ranch i've really been into this stuff it's kind of pricey but it tastes really good it's got avocado oil which is a great oil um and yeah we both like it so we tried their caesar i'm still not sure how i feel about that it was good it's kind of peppery yeah it was a little bit different than but what i, like I expected um but yeah it wasn't bad but we're gonna kind of get this shaken up a little bit Kind of vegan asked, do you watch um, the mukbang channels like Trisha Paytas? I'm familiar with the concept and I have seen like kind of what they do, but I don't regularly watch mukbang, no. That is not a thing that I'm into, personally. Sorry, I was just checking it for you, good. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so. Yeah, I never watched a mukbang. Really? Never? Nope. Yeah, I've seen one before just to kind of see like. What is this? What All the right. kids are into nowadays. Yeah. What's hip with the kids? But okay. that started in Korea, right? Or we think it is I'm Korea? pretty... I thought it started in Korea as like a social eating, like... Because a lot of people right. live alone. Yeah. So it's like you can watch someone eat and you eat with them type of thing. I'm Speaking pretty... of Korean, what are you into now? I like K-pop a lot. Specifically? BTS. I mean, they're like the, a lot of BTS. the biggest K-pop group. Okay, right. Jason's the one who got me into K-pop, so don't... He started. Wait, I got, I got you into it for a second. I mean, I, I showed you my drop, because, which was okay. Okay, awesome. okay. So I became familiar with K-pop, and I like listened to a couple songs. But then Jason got on the BTS train, and we started to realize how good their music is. And now I'm in love. I worked really hard to learn all their names um, because they're, it's also hard because they change their hair color every yeah. time you turn around. So like I'm, you know, when you're trying to learn who people are, that's challenging. But I finally and got you down. Can't really in, like very easily, and even like we watch. And they the, change the style of their clothing all the time. We watched a behind the scenes video of one of their videos, and like they were confusing each other because they changed so much. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm pretty into that. I've been listening to a lot of BTS, but this is the plate. So we've got our pasta here, we've got our salad here with the ranch on it. I'm gonna put on some Parmesan, but just to kind of talk about that concept we were talking about earlier about the components that make a satisfying meal. Let's go through it with this. So we're getting carbs from the pasta. Um, we are getting protein from the ground beef in here. Then we're getting fat from the ground beef, from the oil that the sauce was cooked in. Also, there's some fat in the salad dressing. And then we are getting fiber from the pasta, from the squash, and from the arugula. And then we've got some spices and things going on here to amp things up a level. So that's it. Carbs, fat, protein, fiber. Yum. Delicious. It's wonderful. So that's tonight's dinner. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. So